big money has captured our government. Okay, we're all held hostage. Now, finally, some people are saying it. One of our guests today is going to talk about it. Dylan Radigan said it on MSNBC. It's beginning to creep into the mainstream media a little bit. But the reality is, big money owns the government. It, 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 uh, Dick Durbin, the number two guy in the Center for the Democrats, said when they were tr proposing some regulations for the banks earlier in the year, he said they still run the place. The banks still run the place. But I'm not just referring to the banks. I'm talking about you know, corporate America with the lobbyists. But I'm not just talking about corporate America. I'm talking about anybody who can muster up big money, whether it's a special interest, the NRA, whether it's, uh, you know, you, if you're on the right, you can rightfully say unions, they have a lot of money and they invest a lot of money in politics. But, uh, and it could be just simply wealthy people, like the Walton family, which owns Walmart. They single-handedly drove the estate tax issue. They spent millions upon millions of dollars because when the Republicans removed the estate tax for a short period of time, they made billions out of it. You see, they get it. It's a smart investment. Keating, do you remember the guy who did the Keating Five, the essential character there, the businessman that basically bribed those senators? John McCain was involved, although he was the least involved of the five. And when they asked Keating, they said, you know, uh, you spent this money on these politicians and uh, did you expect them to do you favors in return? He said, of course. <laughs> what the hell would I spend my money on if I didn't expect them to do me favors in return? I'm a businessman. I expected a return on investment. That, I'm paraphrasing here, but that's definitely what he drove towards. And there's a great quote on it here that I don't have with me. But, but that's the essence of it, man. They are investing in politicians so they reap huge benefits from them in terms of government contracts, whether it's the defense industry, uh, whether it's lack of regulation in the financial industry, whether it's getting rid of uh, taxes, especially the estate tax for the Waltons, and the list goes on and on and on. And here today, you know, we've been talking a lot about health care. And health care uh, companies, of course, have a lot to gain or lose depending on legislation, so they pour the money in. And so in the end, the politicians just simply do not represent us the people whether you're a democrat or a republican or an independent like the, in fact i feel most sorry for some of the republicans some of the conservatives in the country who think the republicans represent their interests i mean they're treating you and they're taking you for fools like uh, the banking in, uh, issue is the best example of that the Conservatives hate that we gave the bailout money to the banks right which is great they should hate that there's something really insidious about that that we took all our hard-earned money and gave it to the richest people in America because they screwed up right so I'm on your side on that but here's where we diverge when your Republican politicians tell you oh no no so the best thing to do is leave the banks alone don't regulate them at all let them make the same mistakes again what okay no you know why they're doing that it's because the Republican politicians get paid their wholly owned subsidiary of those banks and they're tricking you into it so look the and that's why I'm putting this as a long-term goal. We have to find a way for the politicians to represent the people and not big money. Okay? It's big money versus the people. And I don't know if we do it through campaign finance reform. I think that's a really good idea or an interesting idea and something that we should explore at length. Or it could be simply uh, that we fight big money with small money that we all find a way to contribute and we become the biggest special interest. And we say, look, if you're not going to do things our way, we do what APAC and the NRA do. What they do is, and we've had reporters on here to discuss this, they target single congressmen or senators and say, if you screw us, we're coming to get you. Okay? And you can do that if you put together a lot of small donors and then we can wield uh, some power so that they actually listen, not because I want it or you want it, but so that they can actually listen to the people who voted them in whether they're Democrats or Republicans. So that's w one of my promises to you, that in the, in the long term, I'm going to fight for that tooth and nail. Because if we don't do that, we're going to lose to big money on every single issue. Now, uh, the s second large issue that we got to fight is the media. And that's why I bring up the media all the time. If the media is supposed to be your refs, and they're supposed to tell you, hey, are, are people playing in within the rules? Uh, they're supposed to call the fouls. They're supposed to tell you, Hey, is this right or is this false? True or false, etc. Now, if they don't do their job, and that's not what they're doing, and instead they're calling everything 50-50, well, then we have a perverse system that we don't know what's true and false. And then the people are misled. And then they think, as they did all the way in 06, in 03 it was a great majority of the American people, but even in 06, 43% of the American people believed that Saddam Hussein was personally involved in 9-11. 
That is 0% true, but yet a gigantic portion of America absolutely believe that. That is a failure of the media. Now that is one easy example, but there are a hundred examples. If the media keeps failing you, then we can't get you the information you need to be a participant in democracy, a true participant. So that's project number two. Get the media to do their jobs. To, not to be neutral, but to be objective. There is an enormous difference. Neutrality is an umpire calling balls and strikes who says, well, look, the Yankees want me to call balls and the Red Sox want me to call strikes, so no matter where the pitch is, I'm going to call half of them balls and half of them strikes. Well, that's, that is stu obviously stupid, perverts the game, makes the game meaningless, calls the balls and strikes as they are. That's what the job of the media is supposed to be, and if they don't do that, then it's impossible to get the majority of Americans the correct information. We're not asking you to cover our side. And if somebody's wrong, whether they're a progressive or a conservative, of course you should point it out. So those are the two big long-term projects that I want to do on this show from here going forward for as long as it takes. You know, it's not going to be something we're going to accomplish in a couple of months or even a couple of years, to be honest with you. But we got to keep going with those goals in mind so that we can actually do real democracy in this country.